we have just released Streams 0.25 and uh, in this short video we will take you through the main changes and new features which you can find in this version. And we will start with some of the improvements to the user operator. Uh, first of them is uh, the possibility to configure custom passwords. Uh, by default, the user operator always generates a new random password when a user is created and the generated password is then stored in the user secret. But sometimes users don't really want uh, to use the generated password and they want to instead uh, specify their own password. Uh, there was this workaround where if you created the user secret first before you actually created the Kafka user resource, the operator saw it and used the password from the secret but it was not completely reliable because uh, you really needed to first create the secret and only then create the Kafka user resource. And uh, also because the user secret was managed by the user operator itself, it didn't work always well with different GitOps tools. So in 0.25, there's a new way how to do this. And uh, you can create your own secret with uh, the custom password which you want to use. And uh, you then just link it inside the Kafka user resource. And uh, when the user operator sees it, it will uh, read the desired password from the secret you created and use it to configure the user and uh, to create the actual user secret uh, with the password and the JAS configuration and all the other things. Another improvement is uh, support for external TLS authentication in the Kafka user resources. Uh, in the Kafka user resource, you always specify the authentication type and uh, the user operator generates the credentials and uh, sets the ACLs or the quotas accordingly. And one of the types was the type TLS, which basically told the user operator that uh, this user will be using TLS client authentication. And as a result, the operator generated a new user certificate, which the user can use for the authentication. And uh, it also used the right username for uh, creating the ACLs or the quotas. But uh, sometimes, uh, Users really wanted to create the certificates themselves, for example, just specify their own client CA uh, when creating the Kafka cluster and then use their own tools to generate the user certificates. But they still wanted to manage the ACLs or the quotas using the uh, user operator. But it was not supported because when you use the type TLS for the authentication, the user operator was always uh, trying to generate the new certificate. In 0.25, we are introducing new authentication type, TLS external, which basically tells the user operator to not generate a new certificate for the user, but uh, still continue and configure the ACLs uh, and quotas uh, as if uh, it's a TLS user, so user using TLS client authentication. So with this, you can uh, create the certificates on your own and then just uh, use them with your clients, but have still the user operator manage the ACLs and quotas. So there's the two main improvements in the user operator. And let's have a quick look at uh, uh, a demo about how you can use them. Now, uh, to speed things up, I have already deployed uh, Stream 0.25 and I deployed the Kafka cluster with uh, two listeners. One of them has Scrum SHA authentication configured and other one has uh, TLS authentication. And we can have a look at uh, the improvements we did to the user operator. So first, let's... Uh, try to create our own uh, secret, which uh, will be where we will store the passwords we want the user to use. So uh, kubectl create secret 
generic, now let's call it Scrumsha user custom password. And let's say from literal and let's name the field uh, where we will store the password custom password and let's set the password to some value my secret password now we created the secret and now we just have to create uh, the user which will use it and as you can see in this uh, Kafka user resource. Here in the authentication section, we have the usual type Scrum SHA 512, but then we have this password field, which is new, and there we say, okay, for the password, please use the value from a secret, which is named Scrum SHA user custom password uh, from the key custom password, which is what we just created. And the rest, the authorization or the quotas, that would be the same as uh, with any other user. So cube cuddle apply. That creates the user and let's uh, try to get the user. And check if it was properly created and we can see that uh, the condition says that it's ready. So it should be created and uh, what we can also do, we can check the, the secret and verify that the user secret now has the password which we specified. So uh, get secret. Uh, now this is the secret we want. And now let's use the cube cuddle magic, JSON path equals, and now I hopefully will get it right, data.password. And now, because this, in the secret, by default, all values are base64 encoded, we have to do base64 decoding. And we can see that the password is my secret password, which is exactly what we have configured it to do. So yeah, that shows uh, how it works. Maybe one more thing which we can have a look at uh, Let's see how it will look like if we create another user. But this time, let's reference there a, pass, a secret which with the password which does not exist. And let's apply it. And uh, now, because the secret doesn't exist, uh, but we explicitly say that we want this to use a, a password from the secret, it uh, will not just auto-generate some random password, but it will instead fail the resource. Uh, so if we get the Kafka user, we can see at, in the conditions that it says invalid resource and it says secret uh, uh, blah, blah, blah with the requested user password does not exist. So it doesn't auto-generate it. You get a nice error and you know that the secret is missing. And of course, if I would now go and create the secret later, then uh, the user operator will then eventually see it and uh, create the user uh, properly with the password. So that was the custom password. Now uh, let's uh, have a look at the uh, TLS uh, external authentication as well. So you can see that's real simple. The only thing we changed here is that the type is now not TLS anymore, but it's TLS-external. Uh, and uh, when I apply the resource, then uh, what we can see is that when we do get secrets and then uh, if we try to get the external user secret, it will tell us that uh, the secret was not found because uh, with the TLS external, we told the user operator don't generate the user certificate. So they were not generated and the secret was not created. Uh, if you want on your own, you can uh, try and see that the ACLs or any quotas which you might specify in the Kafka users 
they are still created and they exist in uh, in the Kafka cluster. So that's it for the user operator improvements. Another new feature is uh, disabling network policies. By default, Streamzy always manages its own network policies. This is important because it helps to secure the Kafka clusters, but it also makes sure that uh, it works out of the box in uh, many different environments, including, for example, when your network policies configuration defaults to deny all configuration, which is not allowed and, uh, and things like that. But sometimes uh, users want to set their own network policies, for example, because they have uh, their own special rules in their Kubernetes cluster, who can configure them and how can they be configured, uh, or because they need some special custom configurations. And uh, that was not always that easy, because uh, when the Streamzy operator creates the network policies, they are there, they cannot be easily changed or rewritten and that's why in uh, 025 we are introducing a new possibility to disable the management of the network policies by the streamsy cluster operator and you can do that by setting the streamsy network policy generation environment variable in the cluster operator deployment to false and then streamsy will stop managing any network policies and uh, once it's disabled, you can basically change the policies which Streamzy created before or create your own new policies and you can really manage them any way you want. Just one thing to keep in mind if you use this, with the privilege comes uh, also the responsibility. So you need to make sure that your custom network policies which you will create will uh, always allow uh, the basic streams of communication such as that uh, Kafka nodes can talk with each other or that they can talk with the Zookeeper cluster and the Zookeeper nodes can talk with each other and uh, the operators can talk to all of these resources to actually operate them. So uh, yeah, if you disable the automatic network policy management, you can customize the things, but it's really up to you to ensure that uh, everything what needs to talk uh, with each other can still do it. And let's have a look at uh, another quick demo how you can set this up. And again I did some uh, preparation. So uh, I have already Kafka cluster and the cluster operator deployed. Uh, if we check the cluster operator deployment And when we check the environment variables, we can see that I already disabled the management of the network policies in the operator using this environment variable. You really just edit the deployment and uh, edit into the environment variables. Or if you install Streamzy through Operator Hub, you can add environment variables through the subscription resource. So that's already deployed and after I did this, I also deployed the Kafka cluster. And uh, the interesting thing is when I now get the network policies, there will be none because we have disabled it. Now, uh, what you should keep in mind is that uh, once you disable the management of the network policies in the operator, it completely stops caring about them. So if you have already Kafka cluster deployed and the network policies exist, and then you disable it, then the network policies will stay there exactly in the same state as they were before you disabled it. But in my case, before because I first disabled it and only then created the Kafka cluster, they were not created in the first place, so they don't exist. And uh, now if I wanna do something, I can, for example, create this, uh, custom network policy, it actually shares the name with uh, the network policy which would normally be created by the operator, but because we disabled it, the network policies in the operator, it doesn't uh, matter. And uh, in this case, I really do just some simple change. 
I uh, allow access to the Prometheus port with metrics only for some pods with the label app uh, set to Prometheus. But you can, of course, do bigger changes. But you should keep in mind that, for example, the ports uh, 9090 or 9091, they should probably have uh, similar configurations as when Strimzy creates these network policies to allow all the operators and cruise control and Kafka exporter and cluster operator and so on to connect to the Kafka clusters. So we can now uh, apply this uh, network policy. It will get created and uh, if you would wait, uh, we will see that uh, the cluster operator will not delete it. It will not change its content. It will just stay there as it is because uh, now it's us managing the network policies directly. There are also many other changes uh, which are released as part of ZO25. One of them is that uh, we are now using the Kafka binaries based on Scala 213 instead of uh, those based on Scala 212. Scala 213 is uh, what's the recommended version by Apache Kafka project itself. And as part of this update, we also had to update the version of the Open Policy Agent Authorizer plugin. Uh, and the new version of the plugin uh, has a different interface uh, of the input data which are sent to the Open Policy Agent server, uh, which is not backwards compatible with the previous version. So keep this in mind and you might need to update your Open Policy Agent policies as uh, part of the StreamZ upgrade. Another change is that uh, all the empty DIR volumes which are used for temporary files uh, in all the different Strimzy deployments now have configured size limit to make sure they stay small and are not uh, taking too much of your disk space or memory. We also pumped the Kafka Bridge version to 0.20.2 which uh, has some updated dependencies and some CV fixes uh, in the dependencies and stuff like that. And uh, there's another change in the user operator, but this one is completely internal. Uh, it's now using the Kafka admin API to manage the Scrum SHA 512 credentials. So especially if you are using the standalone uh, user operator, it does not need to connect to Zookeeper anymore. And this change is really one of the many things how we are making sure that Streams is prepared for the Zookeeper removal from uh, Apache Kafka. And uh, we also created uh, environment variable configuration provider, which can be used to configure uh, the different Kafka operands and uh, clients. And this is now automatically bundled in the Streamsy Kafka container images. There are also some deprecations and, and removals. The Kafka Connect S2I resource has been removed. It's been already deprecated for, for some time. You can use instead the Kafka Connect resource and use its build feature instead to add additional connectors uh, to the container image. The, in the documentation, there's a complete migration guide about how you can migrate from the old resource to the new resource. So uh, you can follow that. Uh, all the different links will be in the description of this video or in, uh, in YouTube. And there's also the change in the Open Policy Agent Authorizer, which I already talked about, which, uh, yeah, as I said, it might need you to update your authorization policies to uh, correspond to the new format of the input data. So these were the main changes in Streams 0.25. Uh, this uh, video is a new thing which we did for this release. Uh, please let us know with your likes or comments whether you like this format and whether we should do it uh, also for the future releases. And don't forget to check our blogs on, the, on our blog posts on the Streams.io website and follow us on uh, Twitter. Thanks.